Apollo? What'll happen if Gina fights Gigi? I asked as we walked towards Tonto's cave. He sighed. I'm not sure. I've never seen those two fight, though I'm worried Gigi will be at a disadvantage. He was limping for some reason. I wanted to ask why, but we had other things to worry about. Why do you think that? My wife hasn't taken on many contracts over the past couple of years. She's had a lot of things to take care of here. That means she hasn't been able to keep herself in top shape. Gina, on the other hand, has been working as a freelancer and, more recently, a member of the Unchained Talons. She's been fighting and taking on contracts nonstop. She's also a few years younger than Gigi. He sighed, wincing a little as he walked next to me. You okay? I asked. He looked over at me and did his best to smile. I'm fine. I just hurt myself this morning. I'm not as young as I used to be. I sighed. Okay. When we reached Tonto's cave, the old griffin was waiting for us at the entrance. He gave me a sad smile. Gina's here, isn't she? Apollo nodded. She is, Tonto. Gigi wants you to come down so you can tell her what really happened with Gale. He let his head hang a little as he said, I understand. I knew this day was coming. I'm sorry, old friend, but this can't be hidden from her anymore. Apollo said. It would be best if you came with me right away. I will. But first, may I have a word with Shadow? Tonto said, looking over at me. I'm sorry, but this can't wait, Apollo said. Tonto looked out over the Crimson Canyon, at the griffins who looked ready to attack each other. I'm sure Gina came here to challenge Gillian. If so, they... until they can fight at midnight. We have plenty of time to talk. He's right, Apollo. Just give him a few minutes, I said. Apollo didn't look happy, but he waved a talon. Fine, I'll be out here waiting, but don't take too long. Tonto nodded, then waved for me to follow him inside. I did. As I walked into his amazing cave, I asked, Did you have a chance to watch the memory orb? I did, and I think I may have found what you missed, he said, walking over to one of his bedrooms, instead of the wall of memory orbs. What was that? I asked as I followed. He smiled. I can't tell you right now. I don't want any eavesdroppers. I made a recording on my terminal. I want you to hook your pip buck up to it so I can transfer the recording and a few other things to you. I saw the terminal on the other side of the room. Walking over, I plugged the Mark II into it. What other things? I asked. Things that will help you down the road. Things that I should have made sure you got the first time you came to Crimson Canyon. The first time I was here, I didn't see you. I know, but I saw you. I wanted to give you this information then, but something told me that I had to wait. Not sure what it was, but something deep down told me that you might all give away your Mark II, and I can't let this information fall into the wrong hooves. He said as he started to transfer the data to me. What are you saying, Tonto? I asked. He let out a long sigh as he sat down. Shadow, Cartwheel's fall wasn't the first time we'd met. I thought back on what I could remember now that my travels with my mom before I entered Stable 28. During the two years we spent traveling the wasteland, I could remember reading a red talon, or any griffin for that matter. Are you sure about this? Since I've gotten my memories back, I don't recall ever meeting a griffin while I traveled with mom in the wasteland. I didn't mean you and you traveled to Wasteland. I met you on the day I helped your mom and you escaped the Crystal Empire, he said. My jaw dropped open, and I started thinking back to the day we left home. I remember mom sneaking past Pegasi guards, using a spell to unlock the gates that surround the city. I remember her walking closer to what was called the Wall of Death. The Wall of Death was one reason most ponies don't know the Crystal Empire was still around. It was a black cloud of magical radiation that swarmed over a mostly translucent barrier, the only thing keeping the deadly cloud out of the city. The only way in and out was to fly over it or use a spell to teleport past the black cloud. I was too sick for Mom to use a teleportation spell. 
When we reached the wall, I passed out and didn't wake up until we were past the Twin Cities. Mom couldn't teleport us past the wall, so she would have had to have someone fly us over. I always thought it was a friend of hers, one of the Pegasi she worked with, I said. He shook his head. No, it was me. Twelve years ago, I was still taking contracts. Not a lot, but still working. A friend of mine asked that I fly all the way to the Crystal Empire and escort a mare and her daughter past the Black Cloud of Death and help her get out of the Enclave's lands. You were out for two days. I think your mother put you into a deep sleep so you could survive the trip. During those two days, I got to know your mother and her mission. She isn't a trusting mare in the least. That much was clear. But back then, she had no one to turn to. So she told you what she was doing? With Stargazer and Aquila? I asked. No, back then, she didn't know about Stargazer. She was looking for falling shadows. She found the information on Stargazer while she was looking into that old project. What can you tell me about it? I asked, still surprised Tonto knew so much about my past. He frowned. Not enough. I did keep in contact with Grimm even when she left Stable 28, but she never told me how Falling Shadows, or what it did, only that she was trying to find it so she could use it to fix something. Falling Shadows isn't the reason I wanted to talk to you before I talked to Gigi, though. I cocked my head to one side. Then, what did you want apart from telling me about meeting me 12 years ago? And giving me this information? On that same day that Aura was banished from the Red Talons, Grimm came here to visit me. He reached behind his terminal and pulled out a memory orb. She told me to give this to you after you've regained your memories. All of them. She said that the only way you can view it is if you spoke your father's name. Then she told me that if something happened to her, to tell you to head to her old shack and find the entrance to the children's first base out here. When you do... Watch the orb, and you'll understand why she had to do what she did. He gave me the orb. Taking it, I looked up at him and asked, Why didn't you tell me any of this before? He lifted a talon and rubbed my mane, almost like a grandfather. The look in his eyes were so sad, yet he smiled. I knew that once you had this information, you'd go running off after your mother again. Honestly, I think it's wrong to force a child to keep up the work of their parents. Your mother might have her own agenda, and a plan for to save Equestria, but it's not right that she forced this onto you. Then, why are you giving this to me now? Because I might not agree with your mother's plans, but I also am not my right to choose which path you want to take. I'd like to see you live your own life and be happy with Aura and your friends. If you choose to keep following your mother's plan, then I understand. But all I ask is that you think before you blindly follow her. I'm not sure why, but the way he was talking made it seem like I'd never see him again. Tonto, what will happen once you tell Gigi the truth? His smile grew a little, but he still looked sad. Try not to worry about me, Shadow. Just worry about yourself and your friends. But you are my friend. I'm glad to hear you say that, Shadow. But I still have to face what I did, he said, turning to head out of the cave. What did you do? At least tell me before you go down there, I yelled. He looked back at me. I found out that Gale was planning to take over as leader. She had a few griffins on her side, and they were planning on killing Gigi, Apollo, Gina, and about five of Gigi's children. I tried to confront her about it. But Gale threatened to kill me and my grandson, Toby. Gigi was always on a mission at the time, and they were planning to take her down when she got back. Gale planned on killing the children first, when Gina was in her sleep, then Apollo and Gigi when they returned. I knew I couldn't stop her on my own, so I told Gina what was going on. I thought she'd at least capture Gale and her co-conspirators. Instead, she fought Gale in the dead of night. No griffin saw the fight. But the next morning, we woke to find Gale's body impaled on the sword of Greta's statue. Then why didn't you tell Gigi what happened? 
Because by the time I knew what was happening, Gigi had already banished Gina and the griffins she was thought was trying to take over the Red Talons. I only just saw Gina as she was leaving. She looked over at me with such hatred in her eyes. She yelled, calling me a traitor, promising that she'd kill me for what I did. After that, I was too scared to tell Gigi or Apollo the truth. You were a coward, I said, feeling bad for saying it, but it was the truth. He nodded. That I was. But the only family Toby has left. And I didn't want to leave this life behind and leave him with no family. But now I know that I should have said something from the start. He looked around his cave one more time. I hope that Gigi will forgive me for what I did. I think she will. But if not, she won't have you executed. If you end up getting banished, then you're welcome to go to the Lucky Horseshoe and live the rest of your days there. I have access to the Royal Suite. No matter what, we'll be here for you, Shanto. I said, running over and giving him a hug. Thank you, Shadow. I think I'd like that. He said, hugging me back. Can you do me a favor, though? I looked up at him again. Anything. He let me go. Wait here while my fate is decided. I don't want to wait here, though. I want to know what's going to happen. I know. But I'd feel better with you here in my cave. I'll be sending Aura up here as well, she said, hugging me one last time. As she did, Apollo appeared in the door. We can't wait any longer, Tonto, he said. Before the old griffin let me go, he whispered in my ear. There's a recording in the top drawer of my nightstand. Please make sure Aura gets it. Also, I know that you and Aura's souls are destined to be together. In this life, in your past life, and in the future. Never. Forget that. With that, he pulled away and followed Apollo out of his cave. I watched him go, a sinking feeling in my stomach. After a little time passed, I forced myself to get up and walk back into Tonto's bedroom. I found the recording where he said it would be and tucked it into my saddlebags. I just sat there, looking up at a few pictures Tonto had from his younger days. My eyes fell on one. It was Tonto and box tape from a long time ago, just outside of Appleton. They both looked so happy in their youth. Written on the frame was the words best friends always stick together. I had to look away after a minute. The sight of box tape still filled me with grief and loss. I missed him so much. Then I saw something on the desk. It was a small notebook titled Moonlight and Jeff, a history of the first children of Luna. Figuring it was something that could keep my mind off of what was happening on this horrible day, I picked it up and read the first entry. As many of the griffins of the Red Talon know, I have spent most of my life looking back at the past. Where our past lives were during critical times in the history. For most historians, they don't look much past the Great War. Personally, I think the war needs any more histories written about it. We may not know all the details about which pony did what, which zebra attacked where, why griffins didn't join a side. None of it matters. The war started with a bad trade deal. It got worse because of a zebra attack on Luna's school. Bad things happened on both sides of the war. It all ends the same. Equestria burned. The Badlands poisoned. Griffinstone fell. What I want to know is what happened before. So I've been looking back as far as I can. Tracking two souls I've always been interested in from tales of myths going on before Nightmare Moon fought her sister for control of their kingdom. I started with an old myth because some of the small facts I first found about a griffin named Jeff showed that he was a founding member of the first Children of the Night, also called the Children of Luna, or the Moonborn. Since I've always had a fascination with Greta's old team, I figured that I would keep digging. Turns out that the old story about a griffin with a pony that fell in love with one another isn't a myth or a fairy tale. It's true. I was able to track it back to the first members of the children, a mare named Moonlight and a griffin named Jeff. This journal is everything I've been able to find and learn about them and the special bond that they shared, all the way to the day they both died. 
Because of what I've learned over the past 50 years, I've found that I could track their souls throughout the centuries. Every time they are reborn, they are always born within a few years of each other, and they always seem to find each other. Always their strange relationship is mocked by their peers, and their life normally ends in tragedy. I was able to track their lives to at least the Great War, but from there I've lost track. Either they haven't been reborn in over 200 years, or I'm missing something. Either way, I've made this journal to at least help myself, and hopefully others understand this bond. I wanted to read more, wondering if this was the same Griffin and Pony Aura who told me about once. She did say that Griffins have a story about two souls that loved each other so much they kept finding themselves in the new life. I would have kept on reading, but I heard something from the front entryway in Tonto's cave. Tucking the journal away, I slowly started to walk back. Tonto? Aura? I asked as I looked around. It sounded like metal on stone. I turned, looking for who just walked into the cave, and I heard a deep voice. Sorry, kid. We can't have you getting in our way. Before I could turn towards the voice, I knew... Something hit me in the back of the head. The world went dark and I lost consciousness. Shadow. Open your eyes, we don't have much time. A voice said from somewhere around me. My eyes snapped open. I didn't even have to ask where I was. I already knew. I was in my own head again. I figured I'd find myself face to face with Aquila, but the voice I'd just heard wasn't hers. It was male. I got to my hooves and looked around. Aquila was still sleeping in her cage. My hooves felt like I was standing in water, just like when I came here with Yaksha. So if Aquila was still sleeping inside her cage, who just spoke to me? Over here, Shadow, the voice said from behind me. I jumped and turned around to find myself face to face with a pony. Well, he looked like a pony. But he was nothing more than darkness. I took a step back and asked, Who are you? Our name is not something that can be put into words. At least not words your kind would understand. All you need to know is that we are non-hostile. The darkness said, That's a load of horse apples. What are you doing inside my head? Are you some pony with the same kind of power as my uncle? We are not. Oricalus gave himself over to the darkness a long time ago. He let himself be tricked by a great evil and now pays the price for it. We are not a pony at all, but something greater. Then why do you look like a darkness? And if your name isn't something that can be put into words, then what do I call you? I said, still backing away from him. If this form displeases you, then I can fix that. As he, uh... They spoke, the darkness form changed, and soon they looked like a normal unicorn. Nothing special either. A white coat with a gray and silver mane, but they had no cutie mark. Does this form make you feel better? No, it just makes me have more questions. It was right then that I noticed that his eyes weren't normal either. They looked like they glowed with inner light. Towards the pupil, they were white. Towards the edges, they were a vast purple. I noticed this as they rolled their eyes, saying, I am sure that you do, but we cannot answer them all. We do understand, however, that it is hard for your kind to talk to another if they do not have a name. So, you may call us by the name of Altair. I looked confused. Altair? That's a strange name. Also, can you stop referring to yourself as we or us? It is just very confusing. Altair looks confused. We are a collective. It is only logical to refer to ourselves as such. I started getting irritated. I don't care about that. After being hit in the back of the head, it's making it hurt even more. I don't have time to consider it. Just make it easier on me, please. Altair nodded. Very well. Seeing as we... Uh, I have taken the form of a full-grown stallion... You may refer to us, I mean me, as you would any other stallion. I shook my head. Anyways, 
What do you want, and why did you bring me here? We, excuse us, I, came to give you a warning, Shadow. We both don't have long. It took a lot of what power I have left to communicate with you like this. When I helped you before, I lost so much magic that I had to rest for a long time. I cocked an eyebrow. Before? I've never met you before. He smiled. Oh, but you have. I just made sure that you wouldn't remember. Back then, you wouldn't have been able to handle it. He waved one of his hooves. It was like he slapped me, as his hoof moved a memory I didn't even know I had missing, slammed back into my head. The night I almost died from the Cazador poison. The memory of the strange dream I had when I thought I was living in an equestria before the war, going to school with Stardust and Aura. I remembered not feeling well and heading back home, waking up again but finding myself in the stable with Mom. She didn't know who Stardust or Aura were. She left me to rest more. Not even a minute. Later, Stardust was at the door. But it wasn't Stardust. It was someone pretending to be my friend. I said they were trying to help me. Trying to make sure I didn't fall asleep again, because if I did, I wouldn't ever wake up. I looked back at Altair. That was you? He smiled and shook his head. Not me. One of my companions. She is better with illusionary magic. I was watching, though. I was the one who told her to make sure you didn't die, because you are important to us, Shadow. I remember you saying something about that before. You also said that you knew where my mom was, but wouldn't tell me. I said. We did know where she was, but we couldn't tell you. Because if we had, you would have run after her, and if you did, she would have taken you with her to Las Olicorn. We couldn't let her get her hooves on Aquila or you. He said, slowly walking towards the sleeping form in her cage. I sighed. You're probably right, but I wish you would have told me anyway. If I had, you both would have died. I shrugged. I might be, but I'm sure Mom would be fine. He shook his head again. I didn't mean your mother, Shadow. I meant Aquila and you. So what? It's not like I want to die or anything. But if my death means she never gets free, then the wasteland is better for it. No, it wouldn't, Shadow. I know you think Aquila is some kind of demon or monster, but that isn't truly what she is. As he spoke, he put a hoof on her cage. Oh, really? Then if that's true, what is she? He was still looking down at the sleeping form. She is Hope. I started to laugh. Hope? She's a fucking nut job. He looked so sad as he let his hoof fall from the cage. Well, she is now. But that isn't her fault. She was trapped in a lab for over 200 years, forced to feel all the pain and misery going on in this land. When she was in the lab, she knew everything bad that was going on. She was created to help ponies, to heal them, and to keep them safe from darkness. But because of Stargazer, she was pulled down here too early. She didn't know how to cope with the pain and suffering. Because of this, her mind became twisted. I looked at the cage she was trapped in. I saw the memory when she came to this land. She was scared. But... How do you know so much about that? I cannot tell you that. Not yet, until you finally do what needs to be done. And what is that? I asked, rolling my eyes. He looked up at me with those strange eyes. You need to become one with her. It's the only way to help this land and to fix her mind. Fuck that, I'd rather she died. He sighed again. I had a feeling that you'd say that. Why would I ever do that? I don't care what you say, I don't trust her, or you for that matter. I know. But you have to know that if you don't merge with her, and soon, it will be the end of you. He said. Now what's that supposed to mean? If you can't tell, I've been doing just fine, keeping her locked up in my head. I was even able to take some of her power away, making it even harder for her to get out. He looked as if he was getting angry. Listen to me, Shadow. If you don't do as I say, Aquila will take over. If she does, she won't be what she was meant to be. She'll never be able to fix what's broken if she takes you over with hatred and anger in her. 
The monster she'll become will be worse than anything you've ever seen. She has the power to destroy this world, more than you ponies already have. Then I'll find a way to get her out of me and destroy her, I yelled. He pointed a hoof at a cage. You are a fool, don't you see that? I looked closer and felt my heart stop. At a distance, her cage looked fine, but up close I saw that cracks were spreading all over it. As I watched, another crack appeared, followed by a flock of metal breaking away. I looked back at Altier. What's happening? To you, it may seem that she is sleeping right now, because you weakened her. The truth is, she's conserving all the power she has and using it to break this cage apart. If you don't do as I say, she'll break out very soon. And when she does, nothing can stop her from taking control. When that happens, your mind will break, and the pony known as Shatta will disappear forever. He said, walking around the cage. You have to listen to me, Shadow. Equestria can't take another creature wandering around with near limitless power. I took in a deep breath, then let it out slowly. I won't let that happen. No matter what you say, I'll stop her. I'm stronger than you think. His form burst into light as he roared. He was no longer a pony. He had turned into a huge bird made out of pure light, with purple and orange eyes. As he spoke, his voice was deeper and filled with power. You will never win against her when she's free, Shadow. If you don't do this, we will make you. I didn't let this scare me. I didn't care what he had to say. I wasn't going to let him decide what I could or couldn't do. You fool. This is my head, and in here I have more than enough power to stop Aquila and you. Like before, when I took Aquila's power from her, I took hold on the vast amount of power around me and redirected it towards Altier. The eyes on the bird went wide as I mixed my own power with Aquila's and used it to banish him from my mind. It was a bright flash of light, then Altier started to vanish like smoke. Before he was gone, he opened his beak and said in a sad voice, We wish we could have saved you, Shadow, but sadly you are too blind to see what you are doing. You don't have much time left. If we were you, we wouldn't get far away from those you care for. I can beat her, Altier. No, you cannot. And when she does destroy you and take this body, she'll kill everyone that you love. Goodbye, Shadow. We are sorry that we couldn't come to an understanding. He said as he disappeared like dust in the wind. I sighed and sat down looking at Aquila who was still sleeping in her cage. Her cage looked worse than it had a few minutes ago. The sight of it made me sick. So much so that I looked away from it. I took a moment and thought about what Altier said and sighed. Stupid whatever he was, trying to control my actions with force. I'm in control of my own actions. A living creature can tell me what to do. Then again... I sighed once more, looking back at the cage. What if he's right and I can't stop this? When I spoke, Aquila opened her eyes then lifted her head to look at me again. Fancy seeing you here again, Shadow. Oh, shut up. I said, getting up and walking around her cage. There had to be a way to fix it. To keep her trapped in there longer. You can't fix it, Shadow. I can, I yelled. I'm not going to let you win. She struggled and laid her head back down, closing her eyes again. You keep telling yourself that, Shadow. But we both know you're wrong. Try with all your might, because it's already too late. I do hope you have fun with this celebration the Griffins are putting on, because it'll be the last time you have fun again. Shut up, Aquila! I yelled, pulling on the magic again and using it to try to repair the cage. She just smiled and kept her eyes shut. When I stopped the magic, the cage didn't look any better than it had a moment ago. It looked worse. Aquila chuckled. Keep that up, and I'll be out of here sooner than you think. This cage was originally made by your mother's shadow. Her magic is getting weak. I've fixed it before. I can do it again. She opened one eye and looked over at me. Sure you did. Or maybe I just let you think that. Either way, it doesn't matter. Now go away. 
I'm bored of you. I'll never let you have my body, Aquila. It's good, because I'm not planning to ask you for it. Now be gone. Oh, and remember, not everything is as it seems, Shadow. As she said my name, the magic in my head pulsed. It was ripped from my control, redirected and used to throw me out of my mind. As I vanished from the depths of my own head, I heard her laughing. I opened my eyes. The memory of what I just saw filled me with fear. Well, what just happened? It was then that I remembered how I'd gotten knocked out in the first place. Someone had knocked me out while I was in Tonto's cave. Then I realized I wasn't inside anymore. I was on top of the cliffs that looked over Crimson Canyon and it was dark outside. It's about time you woke up. The same voice from Tonto's cave said. I tried to move, but I couldn't. I was tied up. So I turned my head and looked into the griffin in full set of power armor. Archer, I should have known I wasn't done with you yet. There were two other griffins behind him, watching me with guns trained towards my head. Archer chuckled, then bow. Nice to see you again, Shadow. I'm happy you woke up just in time to see the show. Let me go, I yelled. I don't think so. At least not till my task is complete. Well, Gina's anyway. I noticed that I hadn't put a spellbinding ring on my horn. I smiled and started to draw my magic. Fuck you, Archer. He just looked away from me. If you don't stop that horn from glowing, my griffins will put a bullet through your skull. I looked back at the two griffins, who both looked ready to fire. Sighing, I let the spell fade. Fine. What do you want? I want you to watch and learn. It's time you see what the real world is like. He said, looking out at Crimson Canyon. What are you talking about? I asked. I can't see a damn thing from down here. Archer looked back at one of his griffins. Lift her up so she's sitting. I want her to watch what happens next. One of the unchained talons lifted me up and put me into a sitting position. Then I saw what Archer was talking about. Next to the arena on the stage that was set up for griffins to perform was Gina, Gigi, and Tonto. Tonto's talons were tied, same for his wings. Gigi was standing in front of him now, blocking him from Gina, who looked like she was laughing. What's going on? Why is Tonto tied up like that? I asked, pulling out my bindings. Tonto admitted to breaking the rules of the lost, lost talents. More than one. You see, Shadow, when a griffin breaks the rules, normally they're banished, as you know. Do you know what happens when a griffin breaks multiple rules? Archer asked. My eyes went wide as I looked up at him. No. He laughed. Then watch. I don't understand. What rules did he break? He worked with the Enclave, for one. He took a contract to help a mare and her child escape from them a few years back. He helped the Steel Rangers break into a stable many years ago, and he was responsible for the death of a Red Talon Griffin by sending Gina to kill Gale without proof of her betrayal. Now stay here and watch, because once they're done with Tonto, Gina will be fighting Gigi. He said, then looked at one of his griffins. Make sure she can hear everything. We only have one radio, sir, a female griffin said. Deal with it. You two will stay here until I get back, Archer said, then looked back at me. I'll be back soon, Shadow. Don't do anything stupid. Where the hell are you going? I yelled as he started to fly away. He laughed again. I have to get ready for my grand entrance. Now enjoy the show. He flew away from Crimson Canyon, leaving his two griffins to watch over me. I wanted to scream I was forced to watch as Gina pointed her glowing spear at Tonto and her sister. As I watched, one of the griffins walked over to me and pushed something into my ear. As soon as she did, I was able to hear what was going on down in the canyon. Somehow, Gina must have had her own radio broadcasting so all the unchained talons could hear everything. Gina was saying, Gigi, he confessed. Everything I said was true, and he did more than just lie about my role in Gale's death. He also broke two other rules. Are you the leader or not? Gina, I am not expect executing Tonto. I am still the leader of the Red Talons. I can banish him if I choose. Just like I did with you. Gigi said, 
It almost sounded like she was begging. Fina lowered her spear and sighed. So be it. I guess you're right. Banish the old Griff. He's not long for this world anyway. Gigi lowered her weapons. Fine. Now, back away so I can do my job. Only if you accept that I am still a Red Talon, and I have the right to fight you for your position. Fine. But once I'm finished with Tonto, Gigi said. So be it. But hurry up. It's already past midnight, and I want to get this over with. Gina said as she backed up a little, smirking. Tick tock, sis. Gigi turned away from her sister and faced Tonto. Tonto, Griffinbeak, you have broken the laws of the Red Talons. For this, your life is forfeit. I could execute you for your crimes, but due to your long service to our talent company, I have decided to banish you. Tonto looked up at her, and to my surprise, he looked like he was smiling. I understand, Gigi. I saw Aura standing next to Shadow, or Stardust and Windthrasher. I can't believe this is happening. And where's Shadow? She has to be here before he's sent away. Apollo was looking for her. Don't worry. Tonto said that Shadow already knew what might happen, and she told him to go to Lucky Horseshoe. Tonto will be fine. Stardust said, putting his hoof on Aura's shoulder. Windthrasher looked like she was crying. I'm sure Shadow just couldn't be here to watch this. Not after losing box tape. Gigi used one of her swords to cut Tonto free. You have ten minutes to gather your things and leave Crimson Canyon. Tonto got up and bowed. I'll be as quick as I can. I only want to take a couple of things before I leave. I'll send Aura with you then. She'll make sure you get out of here safe. Gigi said. Tonto moved closer and hugged Gigi. From where I was, I couldn't tell, but it looked like he was saying something to her. Whatever it was, Gigi looked shocked and backed away from the older griffin. As he turned to follow Aura, Gigi said just loud enough for the radio to pick up. What do you mean? Tonto ignored her and stepped off the stage, and started ahead towards his cave. Gigi and the rest of the Red Talons were busy watching Tonto leave, but I was watching Gina. She grinned and pulled out a portable broadcaster. The same one I was listening to, everything on, saying into it. Okay, Archer. Gigi couldn't do it, so it's your turn. Gigi turned as Gina spoke, but she was too late to stop anything. A shot ran out in the canyon and watched in horror as Tonto's head whipped back a spray of blood blasting out from the back of his head as a bullet ripped through it. It was like watching Wrath go down all over again. I screamed as I watched the kind old griffin fall back. Aura turned down, looking at his body. Her beak opened in shock. No! Tonto! I yelled, twisting around towards the two griffins who were still keeping their guns pointed at me. I'll fucking kill you all! The male griffin flipped his rifle around and slammed the butt of the gun into my face. Keep quiet, unicorn. You're to watch, not speak. I spat blood and glared up at him. Tonto was a good griffin. How could you do this? He slammed the butt of the gun into my face again. Tonto was a fool. Now he's a dead fool. Get over it. The show isn't over yet. The female griffin took hold of my mane and twisted my head around forcing me to watch and listen to what was going on in the canyon. Gigi was still looking at her sister, who was laughing like a mad griffin. Well, look at that. The old griff did have some brains left inside of his head after all. Some of the griffins lifted their rifles and pointed them at Gina, but Gigi put up a talon, saying, No, that's what she wants. Gina laughed again. Oh, dear sister. You have no idea what I want. Gigi pulled the two swords off her back and pointed one at Gina. You went through all of this to prove that you didn't have anything to do with Gale's death. Then you go and have Tonto killed. Gina laughed. Oh no. I personally didn't care if he lived or died. Archer on the other talon wanted him dead. 
All I did was let him know that you weren't going to kill Tonto. So he did it. One of the red talon griffins jumped on the stage and yelled, Let us kill this traitor, Gigi. Let's kill all the unchained assholes. No, Gigi said. Gina, you wanted to take me on. Fine. I'm going to show you why I'm the leader of these red talons. And this time, I won't show you mercy. Gina looked at her red energy spear again. Fine with me, because I'm not showing you mercy either. Gigi looked back at her griffins. No griffin here will interfere, no matter what. This is a fight for power and to the death. Any griffin who tries to get in our way will die. Gina looked at the Unchained Talons. Same order for all of you, even if I fall. Gigi glared at her sister, rage written on her face. If I win, your griffins will leave Crimson Canyon and never return. Gina laughed again. Fine with me. And if I win, I'm the new leader. Deal, Gigi said, and without another word, she attacked. Looked like Gina wasn't expecting her sister to attack so quickly. Gigi took hold of her sister and threw her into the air. Then she flapped her wings and flew fast towards the red griffin. Gina wasn't going to be taken by surprise again. She moved her spear in the way of Gigi's swords as she tried to cut off Gina's head. Gina kicked her away, then dove towards Gigi, her energy spear glowing brighter. She slashed at the air in front of her, sending a blast of red energy at the white griffin. Gigi twisted and dove under the deadly attack, then shot towards her sister again. Gina tried to impale her sister with a spear, but Gigi ducked under it and slashed one of her swords. Gina screamed and flew away, blood dripping from the cut on her chest. Gigi pointed her sword at her sister. First blood, sister. Here I thought you were going to take my place. Gina didn't let her sister's words bother her. I'm just getting warmed up, Gillian. Funny, because to me it looks like you're bleeding, not warming up. Gigi taunted. Gina just cracked her neck. The popping sound of it echoed through the radio. I guess I should get serious about this fight. Before Gigi could respond, Gina dashed forward. She moved twice as fast as before, her energy spear twirling around in her talons. Red energy filled the dark night as she slashed at Gigi, getting past her swords and cutting a deep cut in Gigi's chest. The feathers of Gigi's chest turned black and the red line cauterized as soon as the blade of Gina's spear passed over it. Gigi screamed but didn't fall. She tried to stab her sister with her sword, but Gina twisted around and pinched Gigi in the face. This time she flew down. Slamming into the edge of the stage with a thud that echoed all the way up here as I was being forced to watch. Aura yelled, Mom! Gina screamed and flew down toward Gigi, her red energy spear leading. Gigi wasn't done, though. At the last moment, she rolled out of the way, Gina's spear sinking into the metal of the stage with a small hiss. Gigi flipped back around and slashed at her sister's face, cutting a deep cut through Gina's face. Then she jumped back to her talons and kicked her away from her spear. It was Gina's turn to scream as she was thrown back. Gigi flew into the air again, lifting one of her swords as she threw it at her sister. Gina tried to dodge the twisting blade, but it was only half successful. The blade missed her face, but sank into the same shoulder where Aura had stabbed her a few days ago. Gigi dove and slashed for her sister, who was still falling back. Gina ducked under the slash, then pulled Gigi's sword out of her shoulder and used it to block Gigi's follow-up attack. Gigi jumped back, and Gina tried to kick her in the gut. Gina screamed and jumped for her sister, who was just fast enough to avoid taking a slash to the face, just over her right eye. Gina, however, wasn't able to avoid Gigi's counter slash to one of her talons. Both griffins backed away from each other, breathing heavily as blood dripped from their wounds. The female griffin, who was holding my mane, forced me to watch, chuckled a little. Gigi has no idea that Gina's playing with her. From what I can see, Gina looks just as bad as Gigi right now. I said, trying to pull my mane out of her talons. Stop squirming or I'll rip your horn off, she said, twisting my mane so I was forced to watch the fight again. Gigi just flew into the air, forcing Gina to follow. 
Sometime during the time I was talking to the Griffin, Gina had picked her spear up again and was now chasing after Gigi with one of Gigi's swords and the glowing red spear. As I watched, I heard Gina yell through the radio, Hey sis, how about you take your sword back? Gigi looked back just in time to see the sword flying towards her. She tried to dodge, but the blade sank deep into her right flanks. Blood flew and Gigi dropped, right towards Gina. I screamed and tried to pull away from the griffin again, but no matter what I tried, I couldn't stop what had happened. Gigi tried to flap her wings to avoid her oncoming sister, but she must have been in too much pain. Gina slammed into her, the red spear leading. The red tip sliced through Gigi's stomach, then out her back. The entire canyon got quiet as Gina held her sister close to her, the bloodied tip poking out of Gigi's back. Quietly, so only Gigi and any unchained talon listening could hear Gina, she said, Don't worry, sis. This stab won't kill you. At least not right away. I want you to feel as much pain as possible before I end you. Gigi's blade fell from her talons, her head resting on her sister's shoulder, but I was able to hear her whisper back. Apollo and my children will make you pay for this, Gina. The red talons belong to us. To a true blood talon, not a freak like you. Gina laughed, then whispered back. A true blood talon, you say? I'm more like Greta than any of you are, sister. As for the red talons, they're mine now. Then Gina threw Gigi off her spear, and I watched as the griffin, who worked so hard to help me, my friends and her talon company, slam onto the stage. I felt like my heart stopped. When Ora and her sisters screamed in horror as their mother, the strongest griffin they ever knew, lose to her insane sister. To make it worse, the two griffins who were holding me started to laugh. I knew Gina could kick her sorry ass, the male griffin said. Did you see Gigi's face when she stabbed her? That was great. Shut up! I yelled, trying to free myself from the female griffin. She twisted me around and punched me in the gut. The air was blasted out of me, and she could let me fall to the ground as I tried to grasp from air. Then she followed up with a kick me in the face. Not once, but three times. When she finished, my vision was going fuzzy. Then she lifted me up by my duster collar, pulling me so her beak was an inch away from my nose. Listen here, Carrier. All of us unchained talons have a bone to pick with that bitch down there. If we feel like laughing at her while she takes her last breaths, then we will, and there's nothing you can do to stop us. The male griffin chuckled, looking down at the stage. She's not dead yet, and I'm surprised she lived through that fall, let alone the stab from Gina. Did you hear that, carrier? Gigi's still breathing. Maybe Gina will let her live. The female griffin taunted. She started to laugh along with the male griffin as he said, Nah, Gina doesn't know what mercy is. I felt my heart start to race as I listened to them laugh about the griffin I respected so much. Quietly, I said, Shut up. The female griffin looked back at me. You didn't just tell me to shut up again? Shut up, or I'll make you shut up. I glared up at her. She got her face close to mine. I don't care what Archer wants. I'm going to beat you until you can't see straight. I didn't give her time to do anything, but scream as I jabbed my horn right into her eye. Blood and other fluids from her eye flew into my head and face as she dropped me, screaming in agony. I used my hoof to wipe away the blood that flew into my own eyes as the male griffin yelled, You are going to pay for that! He was cut off by something. All I could hear was someone landing and the sound of the male griffin gagging. When I cleared my eyes, I looked over to see the male griffin falling to the ground, his neck sliced open. Standing there was Eris, holding a dagger in one talon. She looked over at me, sighing. Thank goodness I finally found you. The female griffin was still screaming, holding a talon to the hole where her right eye used to be. I looked over at her, then walked over and stomped her in the face. She kept screaming so I kept stomping, over and over and over, even when her screams stopped and my hooves were covered in blood and gore. Finally, Eris pulled me from the dead griffin. I tried to pull away, but Eris said, Shadow, 
She's dead. Let it go. I looked back at her, then back at the Cameron, where I could see Gina standing over Gigi. Her spear hovered over her sister's face. I looked back at Eris, saying quack quickly, Thanks for saving me, but we have to go down there. Gigi's going to die if we don't do something. Eris looked down at the canyon, too, saying sadly, We can't interfere. I pulled away from her as she tried to put a comforting talon on my shoulder. You can't, but I can. I won't let Gina kill Gigi. Shadow, no, Eris said, but she wasn't fast enough. I teleported right back down to the canyon floor, right at the edge of the stage. Gina looked over at me with confusion on her face. The hell? I pulled the earbud out of my ear and threw it back at her before pulling out my plasma rifle. Archer wasn't even smart enough to take my weapons. Back away from Gigi. Gigi was still breathing. I could see when I yelled at Gina she opened her eye and looked over at me, saying in a weak voice, Shadow, please don't get in the way. Yeah, this is a red talent thing. No one can interfere with a fight for leadership. I'm not a red talon. I'm just a courier, and I'm not going to let you kill Gigi. I don't give two shits if you won or not. Even if you call yourself the new leader or not, the Red Talons won't follow you. Gigi has a family. She showed you mercy when she let you live. You owe her a life debt for that. Well, shit. Gina yelled, pointing her spear at me now. She's the reason I spent the past two years trying to survive. No, that was Tonto. I yelled. Who you had Archer kill. He did some bad things, but he was a good griffin too. I hate you for letting that scum you call a leader shoot him, even though he didn't deserve to be shot by a sniper. Still, that was between you and him. I can't change that. But Gigi showed you mercy and let you live. She had no idea you were told to kill Gale. She did what she had to, as the leader just as she always done. To my surprise, Gina lowered her spear, a look of confusion on her face. Then Gigi said, I'm sorry, Gina. Sorry for kicking you out without listening to you. She lifted her head a little. You won. You are the leader now, okay? But please, don't take me away from my girls. I've just made up with Aura. I have so much to teach them about life still. Hate me for what I did to you if you want. But please, don't do this. You'll regret it one day. Kiki! I heard Apollo say from just off stage. Looking back, I saw Apollo looking in horror at his wife, who was still bleeding on the stage. He stayed back, though, knowing that he couldn't do anything until Gina called the fight. Then I heard Gina sigh and say, Fine. I looked back at her and saw she put the spear away. You'll let her live? I asked. Yeah. But this will clear any so-called life debt I have with your sister. She said, looking down at Gigi. You are hereby banished from the Red Talons, from Crimson Canyon, and if I find you working in my territory, do you understand me? Gigi replied weakly. I do. Gina turned and walked towards the Griffins who were watching the fight. I... Gina Blood Talon, am now the leader of the Red Talons. And the first thing I want to do as leader is invite all of you, all of the Unchained Talons, to join us. I ignored the cheers from the Unchained Talons and ran over to Gigi. Sorry I interfered, but I couldn't let them hurt you. She looked like shit. Her beautiful white feathers were now covered in dirt and blood. The cut over her eye was bleeding badly, and the stab through her belly was worse. But she managed to lift a bloody talon to my face, and slowly she rested it there. Thank you for that. Don't speak. Sin will be here in a second to help you. She pulled my face down and whispered to me, The den. And there's a saddlebag that you need to get before Gina or Archer find it. Gigi. Don't worry. 
I tried to say, but she interrupted me. Weakly, she said, Don't. Let Grimm find it. I pulled away. What? She was starting to get quieter, and she said, Grimm, she can't. Get her hooves on. Book. I was about to ask what she was talking about when Apollo put a talon on my shoulder. Shadow, she's weak and hurt. I'll get her up and to Sin's hut, to help her so my wife doesn't die. I looked up at the griffin. Okay, just take care of her, please. I will. Now go, Apollo said. I turned towards Zora and her sisters and jumped off the stage as Apollo moved to help Gigi get up. Aura looked over at me, asking, What can we do to help? Apollo said to get her to Sin's hut. Sin looked at me, then nodded. If we can get her there quickly, I should be able to stop the bleeding. Aura, can you help me? Yeah, Aura said, then turned to me. We might need you too, Shadow. Come on, that goes for the rest of you too. She added to Stardust and Wind Thrasher. No. Wind Thrasher, you go find the children in Vervain. Stardust can stay here and help, I said as we started to push past the red talons with looks of shock on their faces. Wind Thrasher nodded. I'm on it. I'll tell Vervain what happened and make sure the children are safe, she said as she left. This sucks, I said as we pushed our way past more griffins. Tell me about it. First Tonto, now Mom's on the brink of death. Fletch said. She started to follow us as V flew off to make sure every griffin stayed calm. I just hope she pulls through. It'd be even worse if your mom died on her birthday, I said. Aura and Fletch looked at me with a funny expression. What are you talking about? Mom's birthday isn't for a couple of months. Huh? But Apollo said her birthday was on the same day as the last day of the celebration, I said. Then it hit me. The red feather I found when I caught Apollo talking to some griffin on the first day of the celebration. How he attacked me before he saw it was me, and after lied when I was on my way here. Shadow, what's wrong? Aura asked as I came to a stop. Apollo's an unchained, I said, looking back towards the stage where Apollo was holding onto Gigi, who just managed to stand up with his help. What? That's insane. Aura said. Aura? Fletch? I said, pulling out the flutter I found. I caught him talking to some pony the other day, about something to do with surprising Gigi. When he caught me listening, he told me it was just a party for her birthday, which he said was today. I found this by where he was talking to the griffin after he left. That's Gina's feather. But why would he be talking to... Fletch said but I was already pushing past the griffins again. They weren't moving out of my way fast enough, so I finally teleported back to the edge of the stage. Apollo was hugging his wife close to him, saying, Gigi, I'm sorry this had to happen, but you should have known that sooner or later you'd have to pay for what you've done to your family. She looked over at him. What are you talking about, Apollo? I jumped on the stage. Pulled out my plasma rifle and ran over to them, ready to fire. But Apollo just smiled and said, I never loved Gale. I was in love with Gina. We were going to tell you, but then Gale died and you sent her away. When I found out what really happened six months ago, I started planning with her and the Unchained. To make things worse, you didn't just send away the griffin I loved. You sent away our daughter. Gina might have showed you mercy for what you did to her, but I'll never give you for what you did to Gina and Aura. Goodbye, Gigi Blood Talon. I went to enter Sats, but a griffin slammed me to the ground, right as Apollo pulled away from Gigi, picked up her fallen sword, and used her own weapon to stab her in the chest. Gigi's eyes went wide as the blade entered her chest. Her beak slightly open in utter disbelief at the betrayal of the griffin she called her husband. The father to four of her children, and who helped raise the oldest. Time seemed to stop. All sound in the canyon vanished as I looked into Gigi's icy blue eyes, which looked like just like her daughter's. 
For that moment, I could see one thing in Gigi's eyes as the life slowly faded from them. It was a look of utter despair as she was able to say one last thing before she died. Run. Apollo pushed Gigi's lifeless body off the edge of the sword, letting her fall into the heap of his talons. The griffins on top of me let out a choking sob. Looking up, I saw it was Ravenda. Tears were falling from her eyes as she looked at Apollo and her mother. Then the look of shock was replaced by anger as she moved her beak down and whispered to me, Get Aura and your friends out of here right now. Those words seemed to snap out of me in my own shock as I slowly said, Get off me. I heard Aura crying just behind me, Fletch screaming something, Sin trying to calm Aura down, Stardust pulled back on the bolt of his rifle, and the rest of the Red Talons started to roar with rage at what their second-in-command just did to one of the strongest leaders of the Red Talons. Through it all, V's voice was the only thing I could make out, as she said. Shadow, I don't know what's going on, but you can't trust any of the griffins here right now. Get my sisters out of here before all hell breaks loose. I was fighting with all I had to hold back the rage I could feel bubbling inside of me, at the sight of that once beautiful white griffin laying on the ground covered in crimson. My heart was racing, so I could feel the blood pulsing through me, and a small voice inside my head saying, <laughs> Yes, Shadow, let your anger flow. Use the power you stole and kill them all. Apollo looked over at where V was holding me down. He smiled, saying to his daughter, Good job, V. Keep the courier held down for a little longer. Fuck you, V said, spitting on the ground. How dare you pull a blade on our mother? I'm only holding Shadow down so she doesn't do something stupid and get herself killed, Dad. Get off me now, I yelled as my magic started to flow through me. No, not my magic. The magic I stole from Aquila. It flowed into me so quickly and easily, it was almost like it was waiting for me to draw on it. Before I could do anything, Gina landed next to Apollo. She looked down at her dead sister, then at Apollo. She didn't look happy. No, for the first time since I'd met her, Gina looked sad. It was only for a moment before the mask of rage covered her sorrow. What the hell did you do? Apollo just smiled. I did what you were too weak to do, leader. Now do your job and finish what we came here to do. Gina pulled the energy spear off her back and pointed it at him. There was no reason to kill her. I ordered her to be banished, not killed, Apollo. That wasn't part of the plan. Apollo didn't back down at all as he said, Plans change, my love. Now finish what we came here for, or I will. Gina, to my surprise, lowered her spear and looked over at me still being held down by V. Then she looked out at all the griffins. It's time for a change. For many years, the Red Talons have lived under the harsh rules of a sad griffin. I'll kill all of you fuckers! I yelled, still trying to get free. Let her go, V. Ora yelled, because I'm going to kill them all too. Ora yelled. Gina just looked over at us and rolled her eyes. As I was saying. She walked off the stage and towards the statue of Greta and the laws of the Red Talons. From this day forth, the laws of the Red Talons no longer apply. Any griffin that doesn't follow my leadership, or that of a archer who leads the Untamed, can leave now. If you try and fight us, you will die. Gina pulled out three incendiary grenades from the satchel at her side pulled the pins and threw them at the statue and wall behind it. Griffins who were close to it ran as the explosion echoed off the red standstone around them. The blast blew the statue of Greta apart, same for the wall that once held the ten laws she'd set up for her griffins to follow. When it was finished, nothing was left but a pile of rubble and red dust filling the air. My jaw fell. My eyes went wide and I lost all control of my senses. Same for a good amount of the red talons. Shots went off as a male griffin near me killed one of the unchained talons. Aura's screams of anger filled the air as she pulled her spear off her back and attacked the first griffin not wearing red around their forelegs. V stepped away from me, either from the horror of what just happened or because I finally let the power roaring inside of me out. 
My vision went red as I felt my body change, my horn glowing crimson as I cried out for rage and sorrow. Apollo was the first griffin that I could clearly make out. You are first, I said as I blasted my magic straight at him. The griffin didn't wait for my power to hit him. He took off, avoiding my blast by an inch. As he flew, he yelled, All unchained griffins and red talons who are still loyal to their talon company, kill every griffin or pony who doesn't fall into line, but leave the courier alive, and my daughters. In a matter of moments, he was flying around, running like the fucking coward he was. I tried to attack again, only to find Gina blocking my shot. Her red spear pointed straight at me. You attack him and you die. My voice was full of power and rage as I responded. You'll be the first to die then. Mig mouth for such a small thing. She mocked. Pulling at the power and some of the knowledge I'd gained from Aquila, I used a spell that I'd only seen once, from one of Mom's memories. A long strip of power flowed from my horn until it was crackling. Whip of magic, twenty feet long. When Gina flew towards me, I flipped the whip of magic straight at her. It moved faster than she thought it would, because when she tried to dodge it, the whip sliced along her flanks, adding a long burn right next to one of the cuts her sister had made during their fight. Gina screamed, but didn't let the pain slow her down. She dove for me, but I was ready for it. I snapped the whip of power around at the same time, pulling out Misery and using it to slice at Gina from the other direction. She saw both blows coming and banked up, then twisted around and sliced her spear through the air, sending an arc of red power towards me. I dodged the attack, then another, as Gina used this time to get closer to me. When she landed, I tried to attack again, only to find one of the unchained talons swooping in from my right. I ducked his attack and rolled, avoiding Gina's attack as well. When I got back to my hooves, I found three more griffins coming to help Gina. The first who attacked lifted his wings off, showing a battle saddle with twin energy rifles strapped to it. He fired, but I teleported out of the way, reactivated the whip spell again, and attacked. He twisted around, ready to fire when my spell sliced through his neck, his head flying off of him. Before his body could even hit the ground, and before I could cast a spell again, the other three opened fire. Bullets slammed into my barding, forcing me to teleport again to avoid taking a bullet to the head. Pain filled my body from where the round slammed into me bruising my chest and legs. If they had been AP rounds, I would have been dead. Instead, I appeared behind them, misery coming down to slice cleanly through the skull of the one griffin. Pulling it free, I twisted around and sliced out an eye of the second griffin, then ducked under the slashing talons of the third. Ginny yelled something at them before taking to the air, pulling out a healing potion as she flew the way Apollo had gone. I watched her go for only a second then avoided two more attacks from a third griffin who slashed at me again in the open fire. I felt one of the bullets ripping through the gap in my armor, but I didn't let the pain slow me down as I charged up another magical attack. The griffin just laughed and started to fire again, that is, until my spell slammed into him. His body turned to ash in a matter of seconds. Still seeing red, I started to walk towards the mass of fighting griffins spread throughout Crimson Canyon, Lifting misery and slicing open the neck of a second griffin who was screaming, one talon over his ruined eye. He let out a gurgle of blood spilling from his neck into the airway. I flicked the blood off misery, then sheathed it as I pulled out Mom's plasma rifle and my shotgun and went insane. Plasma flew into griffin after griffin as I slowly walked towards the center of the canyon, my shotgun going off at any time a griffin wearing a gray forearm band got too close. It didn't take long for blood to cover the ground, making each step I took sticky from the blood and mud. Each griffin I killed seemed to make that bitch in my head go mad with delight. Good job, Shadow. That's right, keep killing them. Make every single one of them pay for what they did. I could barely make out her voice, or even care. I ignored the shots that came my way, I ignored the bullets that ripped through the gaps in my armor. Ignored the pain that was growing inside my head as my magic built up. Ignored the screams of fear and pain around me. I was tired of letting everyone push me around. I was tired of watching ponies and griffins I respected and loved die around me. I'm sick of running away when I could do something to make the griffins around me wish they'd never stepped one talon into Crimson Canyon. 
a female griffin attacked me from the side. Her long spear aimed at my face. She died before she got within ten feet of me. As she fell, I said, For box tape. Two more griffins fired plasma rifles at me. I dodged and brought them both down a second after with my own plasma rifle. For cartwheel. A younger griffin threw a throwing knife at me, its sharp tips sinking deep into my flanks. Somehow getting past the armor plating and my barding, I twisted around and blew his head off with my shotgun. For my stable. Another tried to shoot me in the face. He died as I used the whip spell to slice off his head. For Tonto. A scream of rage from a female griffin who looked like she was the same age as the one that had just fell tried to stab me with a dagger. She was dead before she even hit the ground. Plasma burns on her unprotected chest. For Gigi! I felt a griffin grab me from behind and twisted around, ready to blow the head off the fool who dared to touch me. I almost didn't stop my magic from pulling the trigger as Aura's face came into view. My shotgun less than an inch away from her beak. I lowered my weapon and started to shake as I looked up at the beautiful griffin who held my heart. She was covered in blood, as if she'd just been fighting as much as I had been. She took a step back quietly, saying, Shadow. It took me a moment to take in that single word. A single moment that I stopped seeing red as I finally said, They killed Tonto and Gigi. I know. But we can't keep fighting. More unchained talons are coming. We need to run, she said, pulling a talon on my shoulder. I'm not leaving till they're all dead, I said, pulling away from her. You don't mean that, Shadow. Let's go. Let go of Quill of Power before you lose yourself to her. Stardust landed a second later, his rifle out as he said, We need to leave. I'm not going anywhere, I said, turning towards where I could see more red Talon griffins fighting against the Unchained and their own Talon company. Stardust looked over at me. This isn't a discussion. Windthrasher's waiting for us with the kids, and Vervain on the other side of the canyon. We need to go before they get hurt. I looked back at him, then at the griffins still fighting to save their home. You two go. Get as many red talons out of here as you can. The canyon is lost, and if they keep fighting, the talon company will be as well. Aura, get your sisters and run as far away from here as you can. I'm not leaving without you she said, taking hold of my forehoof. I pulled away again, feeling the rage building up inside of me again. Get the hell out of here! I can buy you time! Stardust looked scared as he yelled, Are you nuts? You aren't staying behind! My head throbbed, forcing me to close my eyes in pain as the magic inside me begged to be set free. If I go with you, I'll end up hurting you all. I promise I won't let anything bad happen to me. I just need you all to get as far away from me as you can. In my head, Aquila laughed. You don't have long, Shadow. Either you let me take over so I can stop that power you can't control, or you die. I did my best to ignore her as I yelled, Run! But, Aura started to say, tears in her eyes. I kissed her, then said, I'll find you. Trust me, please. I don't want any of you to get hurt. Please just leave. I can't control the power this time. Aura finally seemed to understand. She took a step back, then said, Fine, but if you die, I'll find you in the next life and beat the living hell out of you. You hear me? I turned around and faced the canyon and grinned. Then I guess I'll have something to look forward to in the next life. Stardust looked at her, then at me. Are you too insane? Aura just looked at him as her wings opened. Trust Shadow. Now, let's go. My head throbbed again as they took to the air, shouting at all the red talons they saw to flee. I needed to give them time, so I looked towards a griffin I could see in the distance in a full set of griffin power armor, yelling, Archer! He killed two griffins at once, then turned towards me and laughed. So, you change color when you're upset. Now that's a neat trick. I had everything I could to hold into the power, not to slip into it, so my friends could 
get out. This is all you're doing. I'm going to make you pay for what you did to Gigi. To Tonto! He just kept laughing. Shadow, when are you going to realize that you can't win? You might have gotten a lucky shot on me once, but that won't happen again. Now, why don't you surrender and come with me? You have a date with my contractor. I pointed my plasma rifle at him and fired. He dodged the shot and another, then flew at me. I teleported out of the way, then fired again. But the plasma only slipped right off his armor. Knowing my own weapon wouldn't do me any good, I holstered it and drew mercy. I'm not letting you leave this canyon alive, Archer. The sight of the blade seemed to make him pause as he said, I heard you managed to find that sword. Where was it all this time? None of your business. He smiled. Maybe not. But I do know that Gina and the rest of the Blood Talons would like to get their family heirloom black. Too bad they already knew I had it and said I could keep it. Now, why don't you come closer so I can show you the special things this thing can do? He just shook his head. I'm not that stupid, Shadow. I know better than to get within ten feet of that blade. My head throbbed again. So you really are just talk. He laughed again. Nope. I'm the griffin who has you outgunned. He waved a talon around, and it was then I noticed that the fighting had stopped. I looked around and saw hundreds of guns pointed at me. Most of them were unchained, but a few of them were red talons. In the distance, I could see hundreds of griffins flying away from the canyon. They'd managed to get away, just in time too, because my horn felt like it was ready to explode. I smiled and started to laugh. Are you sure about that, Archer? He looked at me like I was insane. As he did, I heard Aquila say, Time's up. I'd suggest you close your eyes. It hurts less that way. Archer took a step back, as if he could see what was about to happen written all over my face. Then he yelled, Every griffin get out of here! Gina, who was a few feet away, looked at him confused. Why? We have her surrounded. Archer flapped his wings, yelling, I said fly! Now! That's an order! Gina didn't bother arguing, because she too saw something on my face, as she too took to the air along with the rest of the Unchained Talons. I closed my eyes and prayed to the goddesses that whatever happened next, I'd take down those two first. I started to scream as I let Aquila's power flow out of me. Not in a quick attack or even a spell. No, I let the power of our rage at the world explode out of my horn. I let the raw magic flow into the world like a tidal wave. An ear-splitting boom filled the air, followed by the sound of something flowing away from me as the magic destroyed everything in its path. Power rolled out further and further across the canyon. The huts closest to me crumbled. The area turned to dust. The stage that, only two nights ago, Aura and her sisters performed for everyone on, evaporated. The only thing the magic didn't harm was the bodies of Gigi and Tonto. The scream that came out of my mouth flew, grew louder as I let out my anger and sorrow. Let every griffin or pony within miles know my anger. Let every living thing that could see the magic as it exploded out of me fear me. I would have let every last ounce of my power out. Destroyed everything I could until I had nothing left. But through my anger, through my sorrow, a voice floated towards me. Shadow! I opened my eyes, and through the maelstrom of magic I could see Wind Thrasher, flying only a few inches away from the Dome of Power. If she got any closer, the magic would turn her into nothing but ash. Aquila laughed inside my head, saying, Do it. You don't need friends, anyway. Look how powerful we are if we work together. Wind Thrasher flopped a little closer to yelling down at me, Shadow, stop this before you end up killing yourself. My magic pulsed again, and the dome of magic grew just a little, inching closer to the bat pony. I looked back at her. Get away, Wind Thrasher. I'm not leaving without you, she yelled, her yellow slit eyes narrowing as she spoke. You know you want to kill her, Shadow, Aquila said softly inside my head. Come on. Just push a little more of that power out. She's just a freak of nature, 
something that was created in a lab. I closed my eyes again, yelling, Shut up! Windthrasher yelled down at me. Don't listen to her, Shadow. You're stronger than she is. Let that magic go. I don't know how! I yelled back at her. I could see worry in her eyes as she watched me. If I can pull myself out of the bloodlust, you came back from the dark place, then you can too. You just need something to hold on to. Who are you? Tell me. Are you Aquila? Or Shadow Star? Are you our enemy or our friend? Aquila laughed inside my head, trying to make me say what she was. Your enemy and Aquila. I didn't let those words escape my muzzle. Instead, I said in a struggling tone, I'm Shadow Star, daughter of Grimoire Spell and Nightshade. For a brief moment, I saw some of my past memories of my parents starting to flow through my head. The moment my dad gave me Avon. The moment Mom first helped me braid my hair. Vervain raising me to be a good mare and know how to live. Very good. What else are you? Windthrasher yelled as she did. The magic flowed out of me seemed to lessen. I'm the courier mare, the Mojave. I work for the Equestrian Express. I said, starting to feel control over my magic again. Another brief moment, some of the memories I've created with my friends over the past two months started to flow into my head. Stardust's goofy smile. Wingnut's clever yet dirty mind. That moment, Windthrasher and I were talk walking around New Pegasus. Laser's life lessons. Cookie Bite's wit. The first kiss that I shared with Aura. And who do you love? She asked, flying closer as the magic dimmed. Don't listen to her, Shadow. Kill her! Aquila said, but her voice was pushed back as the magic faded, and my friend landed in front of me. I panted, saying, I love all of you, with all my heart, because without my friends, life wouldn't be worth living. She pulled me close and hugged me. We love you too, Shadow. Now tell me, will you be okay? I pressed my face into her shoulder. No. They killed Gigi. Tonto? Archer took me when I was in Tonto's cave. Tried me up on top of the canyon. Made me watch as Tonto died. Made me watch as Gina fought Gigi. She's dead because of me. She rubbed my mane slowly. You can't blame yourself what happened to her. You don't understand. I caught Apollo talking to another griffin two days ago. He found me listening in and told me he was planning a surprise party for Gigi's birthday. I fucking believed him. I should have pulled Gigi right away. If I had, she'd still be alive. I sobbed into her shoulder. I heard wings flapping behind me. Then another hoof slowly resting on my shoulder, as Stardust said. Don't blame yourself, Shadow. You have no idea what would have happened if you'd told her. No one blames you. I mean, hell, no pony thought Apollo would do something like that. I just kept sobbing into Windthrasher's shoulder as I heard more wings around us. Looking up, I saw Aura and her sister standing next to their mother's body. All four griffins had tears in their eyes as they looked at her. We have to get out of here. I can hear them coming back, Windthrasher said. Pravanda looked over at us. We have to get Mom's body out of here so she can be burned properly. Same goes for Tonto. Aura looked over at the older griffin's corpse. I'll get Tonto. One of you take Mom. Fletch looked at her younger sister, asking, What about the rest of the Red Talons who died? Sin answered, I told Toby to stay with Gina's side of the Red Talons for now. He'll make sure they all get their rights. But Tonto and Mom, they may just throw their bodies out like trash. Now hurry up and grab them. Stardust, you fly with my sisters and watch their backs. Windthrasher, take Shadow and get out of here. Wingnut is with Vervain and the rest of the young ones. They'll be safe. I finally wiped away my tears and looked around at what I'd done. My eyes went wide. Everything within twenty meters was destroyed. It was like a small bomb went off in the middle of the canyon, turning everything in its wake into dust and ash. I felt Windthrasher put a hoof on me. Let's go, before they come back. Not yet, I said, pulling away. 
Aura glared over at me from where she was picking up Tonto's body. Don't argue. Just go. I will. But first I have to grab something from the den. I said as I tried to and failed to walk towards the huge hut. We don't have time, Stardust said. I got back to my hooves and winced at how weak that blast of magic had left me. It was Gina's last wish. She told me to get a set of saddlebags that had a book of some kind in it. She said to make sure Mom didn't get her hooves on it. Archer is working with some pony in Los Alicorn. If it's my mom, he'll make sure she finds it. Fine, Aura said. Stardust, go get this book. And while you're at it, make sure we didn't leave anything in the cave. Then fly back to us as quickly as you can. Are you sure you'll be okay? He asked. We'll be fine. Now hurry, Aura said. You know where we'll be. All right, I'll see you soon, he said, flying off towards the den. Come on, Shadow, Windthrasher said. I moved closer to her and let her take hold of me as she flapped her wings and lifted us up towards the sky. Aura and her sisters followed as she turned east and flew as fast as she could away from what was left of Crimson Canyon. For a long time, no one talked as we flew past Sandstone, past the NLR camp a few miles down the road, and kept going. As we flew, more griffins joined us, all of them with red bands on their forelegs, every one of them looking sad as they caught sight of the body that was being carried by V, the body of their leader. After an hour passed, more griffins joined our flight. I managed to ask, What's going to happen now? I asked weakly. V looked over at me sadly. Gina won the fight against Mom. By our laws, that makes her the new leader. But Apollo killed her. He broke the laws of our Talon group. Gina destroyed the laws and the statue of Greta. This is something that's never happened before. Some of the Red Talons will stay and work with Gina and the Unchained. Some will leave and become freelancers. And the rest I'm not sure. Flutch cut in. My sisters and I will figure something out. For now, none of us will return to the Red Talons or Crimson Canyon after what Gina and our so-called father did. As she said this, she pulled the bandana off her neck and let it fall to the ground. Her sisters did the same, throwing away the symbol that marked them as members of the Red Talons. We are outcasts now, V said as more griffins around us started to join the sisters in throwing away their marks of the Red Talons. Sim looked towards Aura and smiled a little. I'd like to join Aura's new talent group. What'd you say it was called again? Aura blushed, then said quietly, Shadow Talons. Fletch smiled. I like that name. Sounds much more mysterious than Red Talons. So, what do you say, sis? We want some new members? Aura didn't smile, as she said. I have no land, no set rules yet, no pay scale, no contracts. Why would you want to work with me? V shifted her mother's body a little, then said, Because, unlike Gina, you deserve our loyalty. So, you, what if you don't have a thing set up yet? You have us. We'll help you. I saw Groger a few feet away. He moved closer and said in a hollow voice, We'll be happy to follow you, Aura, as long as you promise that you'll one day let us take back our home and make those bastards pay for what they did to us. To our friends. Fletch noticed him, then asked, Groger, where's Pluck? Tears fell from the large griffin's face as he said, He was shot down as he tried to escape. He saw one of those unchained assholes taking aim at me, and he... He jumped in the way. You died to save my life. Fletch dropped in the air a little, then corrected herself. He's... he's gone? Groger nodded. Stupid little shit. Always getting the way, even to the end. Fletch smiled a little. Stupid little shit. But a brave one, too. Aura watched for a moment as Groger and Fletch started to talk about Pluck, and the others joined in all talking about a griffin that fell during the fight and saying something nice about them, at least in their own way. Then she looked at, back at V and said, 
Right now, I can't do much to help with what Gina, Archer, and Apollo did to the Red Talons. But I can at least make sure that you all have a Talon Company to call your own. We'll need a place to set up and call our own, Sin said. Flush looked back at us, saying, There's a building on the outskirts of Freedom that the Queen owns. I'm sure we could use it for now. It should have enough room for all of us. Aura looked over at her sister, asking, Are you sure? Are you talking about that old building that was owned by FNF Tools? Yeah. And the Queen told me last time I was in Freedom that she's still trying to find some pony or griffin to set up shop there. Maybe she'll be okay with your new talent company, Aura. Fletch said. I guess I can look into it. But I'm not sure how long it'll take me to get things figured out. I've got my own mission with Wingnut and Shadow. Aura said. Be nudged her with a wing. And then you do what you need to. Let me and our sisters worry about getting the Shadow Talons off the ground. That is, if you're okay with the work of a bunch of fucked up outcasts like us. Aura smiled a little more. You'd do that for me? Not just for you, Aura. For all of us. V said. Deal. V, you'll be my second from here on out. I'll leave the Shadow Talons in your talons while I help Shadow and her friends. I like that idea, she said, looking around at the forty or so griffins that were following us. How about the rest of you sorry excuses for a griffins? They all smiled and roared in agreement. As they finished, I asked, Where are we going? Windthrasher finally spoke up. Another mile or so. When the Unchained Talon showed up, Gigi sent the young griffins away with Vervain. They headed out of the area. When I went to check on them just outside of Sandstone, Vane told me she'd get them all to a safe place, to a town called Coven. Some of the griffins that went with them earlier helped them get there faster. Most of Cartwheel went there as well, Laura said. What about Bite? Is she okay? I remembered, asking. I hadn't seen the young filly since before I went into the orb. She's with Wingnet. All the kids made it out just fine. Wind Thresher said. Stardust caught up to us a little bit ago. He'd been silent for most of the flight so far, and had an extra set of saddlebags with him. At the mention of Wingnut, he sighed and said, I'm just glad the foals made it out okay. I don't know what I'd do if something happened to them. I agree, I said, looking over at him. In the distance, I could just make out the town itself. From what I could see, there wasn't much there, apart from a few run-down houses, a trade tent and a motel. In front of the motel what was looked like a statue of a dragon. The dragon was holding a sign that said, Welcome to Coven. In the courtyard for the motel, ten more griffins were standing around, at least forty young griffins and a few ponies. Three of the ponies I knew right away. As we landed, Vervain came running over, hugging me tightly. Oh, sweetie, I'm so glad you're okay. Then she pulled away and to look at me, and her eyes went wide. Shadow, what happened to you? I could barely stand. My body was still weak from the amount of magic that I'd used. I rubbed my eyes a little, then asked. I'm fine, mostly. And what do you mean, what happened to me? Or put a talon on my shoulder, then gave me a small mirror she carried. You used her power again, Shadow, even though I told you not to. She didn't sound angry, just disappointed. I took the mirror and looked at myself. I felt my stomach sink. My silver mane was streaked with black now. More white covered my face. Both my eyes had white circles around them now. A line going down my muzzle. One of my ears was entirely white. I could see streaks of white on my neck as well. Pulling off my barding as quickly as I could, I looked at the rest of myself, holding the mirror in my magic. My body was darted with white. Even my tail had black streaks in it. My flanks were polka-dotted in white. My chest, my back, even my horn. I lowered the mirror and started breathing heavily. I look like I have some kind of disease. Stardust walked over, saying, You look fine, Shadow. 
So what if you have a little whiter on your back coat? Look on the bright side. It'll make you harder to identify. I look like a fool splashed paint on me, I said. Vervain had gone pale as she looked at me. You're running out of time. I looked over at her and sighed. I know. The griffins around us didn't say anything. They just watched as my friends tried to keep me calm. Aura ran a talon through my mane, then pulled me close. I could feel that she was breathing hard, but she was trying her best to stay calm as she said. Do you know how much longer you can hold out? I shook my head. I have no idea. Wingnut and Bite walked over, looking at me, then Vervain, as the colt asked. Vervain, do you know if there's anything we can do to help Shadow? The mare who raised me looked ready to cry, as she said. That was what Grim was looking into when she left Stable 28. She said the only thing she could think of was to use a pre-war project, or to find a spell that can pull the power like Aquila out of Shadow. She said the only thing she knew of that could do that was zebra magic. Not just any zebra magic, either. It would have to be the darkest kind of magic. I thought Mom knew all about zebra spells. I said, lifting my head from Aura's shoulder. She did. But that kind of spell she would need to do can only be found in a certain kind of book. They were spells that only dark witch doctors wrote. They were known as black books. They didn't make many of them, and the last one she knew about was owned by Rarity. The problem is that no pony knew where it ended up after the bombs fell, Vervain said. That's why she was looking into falling shadows. Stardust's ears perked up at that. He lifted the saddlebags he took from the den off and pulled out something large and black. Before I caught up with you all, I looked at what Gigi wanted you to get. Shadow. And this was the only thing in it. I reached out with my magic to take the item, noticing it was a huge spell book with what looked like zebra runes on it. As soon as my magic touched the binding, pain flew through my horn and Aquila screamed inside my head. Don't touch that! I let go of the book and winced, backing up. What is that thing? It feels so... evil. Aquila answered. I'm not sure. But whatever it is, it's full of black magic. Powerful blackness that our magic can't touch. I ignored her, as Stardust said. It looks like an old zebra book to me. But it seems like what Vervain was talking about. I tried looking at it again. As soon as I did, pain seemed to throb inside my head. I can't even look at it. There's something about it that makes my head hurt. Vervain walked over and looked at the book. It... It is a black book, but it's bigger than the one Grimm was telling me that Rarity had. Where did you get it? Gigi told me to take it. She said to keep it away from Mom, I said. Now, can you put it away? Irvane took the book and put it in the saddlebags. As soon as it was gone, my head started to feel better. She looked over at me. I think the reason it's making your head and magic hurt is because since you have a quilla inside of you, you're full of light magic. If what we learned about the Black Book is true, it's pure darkness. Can it be used to help Shadow? Aura asked. I don't know. The book is written in ancient Zebra. There aren't many who can read that. Yaksha can, Wingnut said. Vervain looked thoughtful. True. I'd have to go see if she can figure something out about this. But right now, we need to figure out what to do next. I looked over at the griffins who were waiting around the courtyard. You're right. Aura, I think you should figure out what's going to happen with them. I can do that. Why don't you go rest up while we figure out what to do tomorrow? We're going to burn Mom and Tonto first, though. She said, turning to go talk to her sisters and talk to the other griffins who had escaped earlier. I could see now that a lot of them had tears on their faces as they looked at the bodies of the two griffins who'd led the Red Talons for so long. I... I'll wait to rest. I think we shouldn't do anything else until we take care of them, I said. Yeah, they both deserve that much of us, I think, Stardust said, walking over to look at Tonto and Gigi. Thank you, Arna said. 
let us get set up. It shouldn't take too long. While she walked over to talk with her griffins, I saw an older, caramel-colored stallion with a cowboy hat come walking over to us. He looked at all the griffins, then said in a heavy western accent, but also kind of slow, I don't think I've seen so many griffins in one place like this. How can I help y'all? Stardust and Vervain moved closer to the old stallion, Vervain saying, Brown Star, it's been a long time since I've seen you. He looked at her for a long moment, then his eyes went wide. Vervain, I haven't seen you in the last ten years. Eleven, if I remember right, Vervain said. As for the griffins, they are, were, red talons. Something's happened at Crimson Canyon, and this was the first place that I knew we could take them. Oh, how bad we talking about? The older pony asked. I can explain later. For now, we just need a place to rest. Tomorrow, most of the griffins should be headed towards freedom. Well, y'all can stay here if you want. We don't have any pony staying in any of the rooms. Also, I'm not sure if there's enough room for all y'all. We'll manage. For right now, do you think we can get a message to the queen for me? Sure can. We got a dash shot living in town here. We can take it to right away if you want. As I was watching Vervain talk to Bronze Star, I felt a talon on my forehead. I looked over at who it was, figuring it was Aura. But to my shock, it was Sin. She gave me a kind smile and said, You have a fever, Shadow. I really think you should get some rest. Later. Right now, I just want to help with Gigi's... You know. I could tell she was holding back her own sorrow, but she did her best to smile. I understand, but don't overdo it. Once we're finished, I want you to rest. Can you do that for me? I nodded, then let Wingnut and Bite help me up so we could go help the Griffins with setting up two pyres for Gigi and Tonto. For the next hour, the Griffins and my friends found as much wood as they could and set up pyres just outside the town. When it was finished, both bodies were set up upon them, and Sin took over the rite of grieving, the eulogies, for every griffin, since she was the oldest of Gigi's children, and very close to Tonto. I did my best to listen to most of it, but my body had enough and slowly started to pass out. I did wake when the fires were lit, and rested my head against Aura as we silently watched their bodies burn. I did my best to stay awake for the rest of what was the rest of the griffins had to say, but I slowly found myself coming closer to sleep again. Then I found myself being woken by Windthrasher. Come on, Shadow. We have a room set up for us. I looked around and realized I was resting up against the leg of the dragon statue. Where's Aura? She had to talk with the griffins more, and set up what they're going to do next. She told me to get you to bed. I let her help me up and lead me to the room where the rest of my friends and three griffin kids were inside. Stardust smiled, saying, Some of the kids are staying up with us tonight. I just nodded and made my way over to the bed with Windthrasher. She helped me, then laid next to me, saying, I'll keep you company till Aura gets back. I just nodded and snickered just enough, saying, Windthrasher, I thought you said your barn door don't swing that way. Windthrasher laughed lightly. I see your sense of humor is back. Go to sleep, Shadow. I couldn't help but laugh again, ending in a cough, readjusting myself to lay down in a more comfortable position. Sounds good. Bite was already asleep next to Wingnut, and one of the griffin chicks on the other bed in the room. Stardust was helping the other two calm down by telling them a story. Vervain wasn't here. Windthrasher pulled me close and started to rub my mane in an almost sisterly way as she said, Her veins with Aura and her sisters right now. She'll be back later. She's also trying to figure out where the rest of Cartwheel can go now that Sandstone isn't safe. Hey, Windthrasher? I asked. Yeah? Why'd you risk yourself to help me back in Crimson Canyon? You could have died if you'd gotten too close. She hugged me a little tighter, saying, Shadow, you helped me find my way back when I lost it in Winneapolis. I know what it's like to lose control of yourself. I wanted to help you, 
and I wasn't going to just let you get taken over by Aquila, or let that power destroy you. I closed my eyes and said silently, I love you, Windthrasher. She giggled. Don't let Ori hear you say that. You know what I mean, I said. She just chuckled, saying, I know, and I love you too, Shadow. I slept till noon the next day and still feel tired. I would have stayed asleep for two days if I could, but Aura woke me with a few kisses to my nose. Time to go. I opened my eyes and saw I was bundled under the blankets, and only one left in the room. Where are the others? The Griffins already left, with my sisters for freedom. Ravain got a message to the Queen last night about what happened. V is setting up my new talent company and taking over for now. She is going to see about getting the Red Talons kicked off the Strip, so we can set up a new Pegasus. Aura, I'm sorry. She cut me off. There's nothing more you could have done, Shadow. Even if you told Mom about Apollo, she wouldn't have believed you. As much as I love my mom, she was hard-headed when it came to her family. My father included. I got up and started to get my barding and duster back on. I just can't believe she's gone. I know. But as it stands, we can't do anything to fix what happened. We need some time to settle and figure out a way to get Crimson Canyon back. Get the Red Talons back. Do we? I asked. Is it so bad the Red Talons are defunct? She shrugged and started to head out of the door. I don't know. I really don't. Honestly, I think we should use this time to regroup. I really want to worry about you right now. I'll be fine. She cut me off by slashing her talon in the air. No, Shadow, you're not fine. If you haven't noticed, you're slowly turning into her. I'm not letting you get sidetracked anymore. That book my mom found may be the only thing that can help you get better. But it also might not be the only thing. I sighed. I don't see how there's anything we can do. Well, I'm not giving up on you. And neither are the rest of our friends. We've talked to Vervain about it, and she's going to take that black book to Yaksha, who's up in Frosty Summit right now. While she's doing that, we're going to find your mom. Laura said. My eyes went wide. My mom? Why? She wants me dead, if you don't remember? I know. But if we can somehow capture her, we may be able to figure out a way to get her back to those hunter brothers, to see if they can fix her memory. Even if we can't, she has to know something about how we can fix you. I'm not sure that'll work. We have to try. Even if there's the smallest thread of hope, we're going to try it. The only thing is, we don't know where to start looking for her apart from Lost Alicorn. But even then, we need something that'll help us convince her you're not lying. Aura said. I took a moment, then it came to me. Mom's shack. Aura lifted an eyebrow. Her shack? I nodded. Yeah, there used to be some kind of bunker under it. If we go there, we might find something that'll help us. It's a good place as any to start. So where's this place? I smiled and walked out the door. All I know is that it's between Trotston and Spitfire Flight Academy. But Stardust should know exactly where it's located. Stardust, Bite, Wingnut, Vervain, and Windthrasher were waiting for us out in the courtyard. At the sound of his name, Stardust looked over at us, asking, What do I know now? You remember where that shack is, where my mom took off your pip-buck? He thought for a moment, then said, Oh yeah, I didn't even think about it. But that was your mom, huh? Yeah, what about it? I did my best to smile, doing my best to push out everything that had happened over the last few days. We need to go there. Do you think you still remember where it's located? Yeah. I don't right where it's at. It's not far from that spot I found you all when I was still pride, he said. Perfect. Then we should head that way now, I said as I noticed our sky carriage was sitting on the road just outside of the cartyard. Where'd that come from? Stardust smiled. I couldn't sleep last night, so I asked Vervain where she'd left it. I told him I left it outside of Sandstone. The fool flew off last night to go get it. Vervain said, sounding a little pissed. Stardust just smiled. 
Hey, I made it back here without any trouble. I can be sneaky when I want to. You could have gotten yourself killed, Windthrasher said, all still sounding pissed. Yeah, I know, but I'm fine, he said. So, when are we leaving? I just hugged him. In a minute. And thank you for risking your life to get this for us. It'll help if we have to go to Los Holocorn. Vite and Wingnut both said at the same time, Why are we going there? I'll tell you later, I said, walking over to Ravane. You gonna be okay? She nodded. I'll be fine. I sent the rest of Cartwheel with the Griffins. The Queen will look after them and help them the same as the Shadow Talents. I'm sure to get a message to you as soon as I find out anything about this book. I just want you to be careful. Don't use that power anymore, no matter what. I won't. She hugged me again and said, I'll be going now. I have a lot of walking to do. Stay safe, sweetie. The same goes for the rest of you. We all waved and watched as Ravane started heading out of town. Then we all went to the sky carriage and Stardust hooked up to it, saying, You all ready to go? Once we were all set up inside, I rested against Aura and said, Let's go. Aura pulled me close as Stardust said, All right, hold on to your manes and tails. With a blast of speed, Stardust blasted into the air with a hearty laugh. Bite grabbed onto Wingnut, shaking as she said, I really don't like heights. I just laughed. You get used to it. Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Unchained. Due to the amount of magic you have used, you have broken the chains that held your own power back along with the power you took from Aquila. And due to this, your magic has grown and will be a lot easier for you to draw upon when someone you care about is in danger. Plus one to endurance when your health drops below 20%. Dark perk added. Demon's power. The magic you have taken from Aquila has started to corrupt your mind and body. Now, any time you draw on her power, it'll make you harder to distinguish between friend or foe. You may one day end up killing some pony or griffin close to you, the more you use the power of the stars.